guys, go to hardafseltzer.com. Get some 8% seltzer shipped right to your house. We got the peach, we got the watermelon, we got the pina colada and the blue raspberry. We are currently live in over 300 stores in Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and the Outer Banks in North Carolina. And if you're heading out to the Major League ballparks this summer, make sure to check us out in the Miami Marlins Stadium, as well as Tropicana Field, home to the Tampa Bay Rays, as well as the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We are live inside all three stadiums. So if you're down in Florida this year, check us out. Go to hardafseltzer.com today and check your store locator or order them right to your house. Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to the Monday Morning Recap, everybody. As always, we're brought to you by MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Voice is a little rough today, boys. Uh, yelling at the game on Saturday. Were you yelling? Trying to get through it. Do something? Yep. I, how many times did I say do something, Dan, at that game? Well, on either team, I think. Yeah, I mean. Holy shit. I, I don't know. That, that was one of the weirdest coached games on both sides that I've ever seen. In real life. From the from beginning <laughs> to the end, especially getting like towards the end, uh, I don't, Penn State's coach is a fucking retard. Yeah, James Franklin? Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, you're down 14, uh -huh. you score a touchdown, and then you go for two? Why? <laughs> That's the new thing. That's analytics, baby. No, That's, no, no. no. no you were complaining no. about this multiple times. Like the only reason you lost to Baylor is because uh, Baylor's coach made that same mind-boggling move. To just like inexplicably go for two for yeah, no but reason. He would go for two when it was an eleven point game to make it a nine point game. Yeah, that makes it, sense. Uh, that makes it? no sense. No, no, big time. No, that's what, like if, unless it's turning a three score game into a two score game, it makes no fucking sense. If it's already a two score game and you score, it's still a one score game. They're making a two score game into a two score game. Yeah, yeah, eleven to nine. I'm yeah, fucking yeah. with you. No it's sense. fucking stupid. It's, it's all stupid. It's stupid. what we're saying. But then it ended dumb. up working out because they kicked the field goal and they uh, won the game instead of tying the game. Because right? they kept yeah. making right. two point conversions. But, that, but, but that, you're forcing yourself into horrific situations. And then Ohio State did the same thing with with Ryan Day in the first. Well, yeah, in the first quarter, and then in the third, they did it reverse or second, first and second quarter. So in the first quarter, they thought their defense can make a stand. So they uh, didn't take a penalty, right? They mm -hmm. wanted to get the down yeah. instead of the penalty. So it was second and 10 instead of first and 15. Penn State didn't get any more yards. Matter of fact, they lost one yard on that drive um, and then kicked a 41-yard field goal that would have been a 46-yard field goal, which is notoriously difficult for college players. Right. That's three points they wasted. Then they didn't kick a field goal on their own fucking 15, mm -hmm. which is a goddamn extra point. I know that's a six-point swing. That's a one-score right. swing that Ryan Day himself fucked up. Like he's a it was terrible fourth coach. And three. It was he's fourth a, and three. He's a terrible coach. Yeah. Don't send it back. Terrible. Send it back to OC. That's where he fucking thrived. Let <laughs> him go back to OC. Well, he's calling the plays now. Yeah, but it's like that's a whole different thing is managing the entire team plus d just do OC, go back up in the booth, do OC, and shut the fuck up. He's not a good coach. How often can a guy just like routinely be in the playoff picture and be, people call him bad coach. Be dominant and be uh, a bad coach. Absolutely. He inherited. Riley. Dude, he was born on fucking halfway down third base. <laughs> yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? It's Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, When's it, the last time Ohio State was not good? Like, I, seriously. I, I, th 35 the, years the ago. The middle 1990s, I think. No. Was the last even time. Then, what was uh, Eddie George uh, won the Heisman? When I was in college there, we finished number, number two in the nation three years out of four that I was there. Well, so maybe it was the it was late 1980s. Late then. 80s, The, the yeah. game totally swung, though, on that fumble recovery for a touchdown that got called back on the uh, defensive, defensive hold. On, on which Marvin is, Harrison. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which was true. That was definitely a hold. But they missed those, – those refs missed so many clear holds. Awful. Awful. And the, like, oh, man, it was, it was bad. It wasn't as bad as Miami-Philly last night. You guys definitely benefited from some calls. But listen, well, we'll get to it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, as far as uh, the penalties go, the decisions of the coaches, both quarterbacks are terrific. Um, Dude, I'm sorry I, you guys don't like Big Ten football. That was, that <laughs> was a classic Big Ten yeah. matchup. It, so a classic Big Ten matchup is running up the middle every single time. Like yeah. I'm OK with that in a good defense. Neither Tim team did that either. They let the quarterbacks 
Chuck, and yeah. it was uh, all over the goddamn. The defensive oh, schemes was the terrible. Def- yeah, he was bad. The defensive schemes were good, though. I think McCord, uh, Ohio State has a neither an McCord, elite n- neither McCord nor Aller can throw to the outside accurately. They, they have Dak Prescott arm. That's Kyle what I call was it. fine. No, no, no. Kyle was not fine. He was Kyle not was fine. fine. They can't throw an out pass right, which in two minute drill fucks you up, and then just the ability to spread the field out to keep those safeties. Pin to the outside so you can go down the middle, which is what fucking Mahomes is great at, getting Kelsey in the fucking slot there. Neither one of those teams are capable of doing it, so the defense is being good and being coached well. Pack the inside, yep. and that's what fucked them up. That's what fucked up the run game. What was there, like a total of 110 yards rushing in that game? It was the Penn whole thing. Big game? Are you kidding me? Penn gross. State and Ohio State's defense Great defenses, are elite. They are, for sure. They are, they are absolutely but, but, elite. But you can beat that defense by being able to throw outs. Right, if they yeah. have to guard that pass, if they had to fucking drop down on that pass, on that out pass, and you can complete it accurately, then it opens up the middle of the field for both running, right? Because you don't have those three linebackers right there in the middle. Yeah. Or it opens it up for those uh, over the top passes, and neither one of those teams could do either. And and the scariest thing, Sucked. Delco, uh, is this. I know Marvin Harrison put up, I think, 173 yards or something like mm-hmm. that, and I know that you had have to be him. like all the yards in it, the game. It, it was. It was most of them. <laughs> it was all of Kyle <laughs> like McCord's yards. Like out of 260, yards. I think it was. It yeah. was yeah. two players. Your your first round tight end pick. Uh, uh, Cade Stover and then Marvin Harrison, but the yeah Stover had seventy. So who else had ca- any? The, the catches that those not no no one. The catches those receivers are forced to make are, are gross. And Marvin Harrison is so good. If he would just hit him in stride, he could have gone for three hundred yards. And although I'm sorry, he say, trusts his high school teammate from St. Joe's Prep. I, and he people, just knows where to put the people ball. in the crowd were like, "Was this a package deal yeah. when they got him?" Of like, "Hey, you've got to take this quarterback." With I will. You? I will say though, Harrison had three drops. And Ohio State in general, I think, had about seven. Yeah. I, so, and you guys started to cook a little bit when Chop Robinson went, got carted off the field. That's Penn State's best defensive yes, player. Yeah. Absolutely. He's their current version of Michael Parsons. He's not as good as Michael Parsons, but he's their current version. But he's done for the season, I imagine. I, he, that looked pretty it rough. Lo- it looked pretty, pretty yeah. bad for like, those guys. He was, like, convulsing and shit. He might have AIDS. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not willing to throw in the towel on Drew Aller. Uh, no, he's, he's a, a true, he's a true freshman. freshman. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be fine. Kyle McCord, there's no excuse. He's a he's a junior. This well, having like a fourth year junior. Penn State, from a coaching perspective, and again, Franklin's a retard. But having Aller throw 42 passes in a fucking defensive matchup like this, <laughs> yeah, because you guys have two great running backs. I mean, too. what the fuck, dude? But you know, it's it's a lot easier to armchair this shit. It's a lot easier to call plays from up in the stands than it is from down on the ground. It Franklin is. just shits himself whenever he plays a big game, mm, whether yeah. it's Michigan, whether it's Ohio State. He just can't get it out of his own way. Yeah, I think like Penn he State plays, might end up losing by 20 to fucking Michigan. He calls everything honest. so conservatively. I actually think they could still beat Michigan because it's a home game. Maybe. but Maybe it's it's still going to be a noon game. Um, but arm, speaking of armchair quarterbacking it, Dan and I, uh, if you saw the pictures online, got to uh, hang out with Urban Meyer and uh, Coach Jim Tressel. Uh, Thursday night, we did a, a hard AF uh, seltzer charity event with those guys. Um, I might have gotten a, f- a little lippy towards the end of the night on some hard AF seltzers. Uh, Brian Hartline did walk in to the party. Very small <laughs> gathering, maybe 150 people, mostly high-end donors, boosters, all that other stuff. And, uh, and I had my shot, so I took it. And, uh, and I walked up to him. It was him and his buddy. And I go, hey, man, I love you. I think you're the greatest recruiter there is. I think you're going to be one of the greatest head coaches there is one day. Why aren't you calling the fucking offense? And he goes, I think Coach Day is doing a great job. And blah, right, blah. right. It was the most political answer, and there's only three of us. It's not like we're taped. Nobody was around filming, nothing. Well, everything. I mean, you are talking about the conversation on a microphone right now. Uh, well, now I am. <laughs> like two days later. Now I am because so I'm, I'm, I'm pissed told, off about if it. If he had told you what you wanted to hear, would you have been like, okay, I'll keep that on the deal? Well, we've had GMs on the show before in the past who have been open about, hey, here's what we're looking for, whatever. Uh, Ballard for the Colts was surprisingly honest about – them looking for a quarterback and all that stuff, and it was great. Um, then I asked him about the stretch play. I go, yeah. okay, if Day's calling all the, st- all, all, the, all the offensive plays, can you please take out that fucking stretch play that never, ever works? <laughs> and here's how I can tell he's going to be a stone-cold killer yeah. as a coach one day. He got closer to me, and I'm a taller guy yeah, than yeah. him by, by a good three inches, and he looks at me in the eye maybe 12 inches from me, and he goes, we're leaving the goddamn play in. And then just walks away. Yeah, it was a good call, too, because it worked zero fucking times in the game. Congratulations, sir. Well, he only did it once. He only did it once instead of 90 that time. So maybe it was me that was able to get it done. I think it was a loss of five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, But the biggest takeaway is what do you do with this team now? Because, And I'm talking about Ohio State. Because the rumor is 
when the, the first CFP uh, playoff announcement comes out that they will be number one just because they're the only team that has played two teams inside the top 10. I certainly don't think they're the number one team in the nation. I probably still have Georgia and I got Michigan too, but neither of them have played anybody yet. So what do you do, I guess, as far as rankings go? I mean, you know, so so you guys are – I wanted to check this on the analytical, more analytical ranking stuff. Mm-hmm. Ohio State is number one in FPI. And in S&P Plus, which is ESPN's other one, they're fourth. So – but, yeah, Georgia – Georgia's resume is about to get a lot better because the back half of their schedule is now, like, low-key better than it, it looked. They got to play Mizzou. Uh, yeah, you know. I well, know. Here's, and here's the thing. After watching Tennessee over the weekend, who wasn't great – I think Missouri might be the toughest team on their schedule left. They have Ole Miss. No, I, I, Ole Miss didn't look great either. I've got Missouri as their their best. Ole Miss is still win. good, and so is Tennessee, and Tennessee so is Alabama. Is like, yeah, Alabama, and, and, and then a rivalry game against Florida, who is not a slouch. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, their their schedule is is backloaded, I think. But yeah, oh, you guys have had probably the best resume so far of the top five teams. Also, Kentucky's not terrible, and they destroyed them. Yeah, they murdered Kentucky. Yeah, but so did Missouri. Well, uh, and, I mean, that's why I think the toughest game on this schedule right now is Missouri's at 16. I've watched – Dan and I have watched Ole Miss play 30 fucking times. I, I'm not impressed by Ole Miss. Uh, Tennessee looked like dog shit in the second half up there. It's a road game, though. It, it is, but it's still not great. Uh, whereas Missouri rolled again this weekend, and, uh, and their offense is rolling. That's the only offense I can see keeping up with Georgia right now. Uh, out of the five games they have left. Mm-hmm. Weird. And that's crazy to say. I mean, without Bowers, I don't really think Georgia's offense unstoppable. Like they're he's o- their best weapon. I mean, well, their offense is never unstoppable. No. Yeah. Right. No, they 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 benefit from getting one to two more possessions at a minimum than their opponent does a game. And right? and good field position. Yeah. Yeah. Um I they'll be fine. I'm telling you, there's gonna be a weird game with Georgia. They're gonna lose. They're going to lose one of these games. I feel like it, too. Um, and well, look, it doesn't matter. It, wouldn't, it also wouldn't shock me if Alabama did beat them in the uh, the SEC championship. That would shock me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Al- Alabama, like, it's like the most fucking lucky team of all uh, yeah. time. Every I, time I, I think that Alabama can beat them, but Alabama is the preferable matchup between Alabama and LSU Again, for Georgia, I think. All right. Let's not – let's – pump the brakes on LSU. Do you, they did to, do you see what they did to our troops this weekend? Yeah, it's it's just <laughs> all right. It's just that by the way I accused the the very midwestern people sitting next to me of booing the troops <laughs> at the game. They're like no, we would never do that. <laughs> um if they're it, officers, that's not a big deal. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, if LSU is able to get into a shootout with Georgia, then they're I mean they, that's a puncher's chance that yeah. we, like how you would refer to a guy that's just a wild swinger in UFC. Like you got a chance you might knock him out. It, but. The, the thing with LSU that's so scary to me, looking back, like playing, having played them, and then uh, just l- watching Georgia games, watching Alabama games, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, is that like that's just that the, their unit, their offensive unit, is head and shoulders better than any unit in the SEC. I don't think there's a defense that compares to them. Yeah. And then you've got like, Georgia. No, to no, LSU's LSU's offense. Offense. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's. A, I don't think there's a defense in the SEC that is anywhere near as good as LSU's offense. Now Jaden Daniels is like. A Heisman front runner? No, no, thank you. Keep it. I don't know about that because he Phoenix, is like like uh, betting wise. Vegas. He'll, 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 he'll might be now. Harrison after Phoenix shit the bet on Saturday. I, Harrison's still, I think, like 25, 30 to one. Is he really? Yeah, but it's um, just tough to not be a quarterback. Yeah. I'm wait, I'm just waiting for him to start putting up numbers, especially against like Rutgers this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll see. But Phoenix had a bad game. Um, obviously, Caleb Williams lost. Again, Williams is cooked. Yeah. yeah uh, and by the way, that Phoenix game, man. If you're an Arizona State fan. Um, uh, did you guys watch that game? Yeah. That was, was the most egregious fucking PI penalty that was not called at the end of a game until that Saints, maybe that Saints playoff game. Yeah, the Rams. I mean, it was, you, they ripped that guy's shoulder pad in out of his fucking uniform there. Um, it seemed like the fix was in. Somebody made that call down there. Because uh, otherwise, Arizona State goes up by two, two scores with four minutes left to play. And Washington is done at that point to a one to five Arizona State team. Uh, looking at the rest of this, look, Michigan rolled. Uh, they played Michigan State. Let's not pretend like there's a real game. I understand, but they've won every game by 50. They have now moved ahead, as far as Vegas is concerned, as the favorites to win yeah. the national championship. But, I mean, that wasn't even the biggest story of that game. No, it was hardball cheating. Well, no, it was... Uh, Connor Stallions. <laughs> it was Michigan State putting Hitler on their screen. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We had that as well. 
Uh, Mel Tucker wasn't good enough this year. Let's throw Hitler up there. Where is he from? That's going to be on fake news. <laughs> a little trivia. Is it? I put that on fake news today because it's so goddamn funny. It's so <laughs> fucking funny. Where is he from? Uh, my God, man. I, I can't believe that happens. Uh, the, the, look, the Michigan thing and the cheating scandal. Connor Stallions is the guy's name. I mean, th- it, that's like Johnny Sins. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a real fucking name. Marine Connor Stallions. <laughs> And he's got, like, a fucked-up uniform on. Um, <laughs> by the way, within seconds of that being announced, they must have known that the announcement was coming because all of his social media, to include LinkedIn, was fucking wiped from the Internet. Oh, yeah. Gone. Which is, by the way, I even put it in the Wayback Machine, and it still wouldn't pull it up. Which really? means they, yeah. they went, like, this, this dude probably worked in the intelligence community at some point. That would be my guess. And they went above and beyond. Uh, they seized his laptop. Obviously, he's gone from the team. They'll figure out what's on there. Again, we did have the advantage of talking to Urban Meyer two hours before the event started. And uh, and I asked him point blank. I said, uh, what do you think of Harbaugh in the, in the cheating scandal? And he goes, his exact words were, he's been fucking cheating for years. Uh, now, what I heard was Shiano was the, the final call there. But there was another coach before the Rutgers game that had noticed it and said, hey, I think it, it seems like they know our plays. And then, uh, and then Shiano, by the halftime, I guess, um, of that first game, had said something. He gave a livid halftime interview. What was it about? I didn't. I didn't see it. Uh, uh, I wasn't I watching the Rutgers it, game. I just caught the video on Twitter after the allegations broke or whatever. Okay. Because I'm. Uh, I didn't watch that game, but he was just like, "There's some, there's some stuff going on, and we'll have to talk about it. But it's not right, or like just you know, like fuming, but didn't want to like outright just accuse anyone of some shit right away. But he was, and it didn't seem like penalties. It's, it no, like no, 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 no. Okay. He was very clear that it was like under the table type of CD shit. Gotcha. Well, kind of like, like what went down with uh, Philly and Miami last night, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. With all those final... <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you uh, we'll establish there. yourself as the uh, premier team in the league, you get the calls, okay? You do. You no, know, you absolutely do. Eagles got the calls last night. But with Harbaugh, I don't know what happens with his situation. It seems very reminiscent of uh, Bill Belichick and obviously the Patriots there. Uh, I do find it odd. I mean, just chatting about it. Uh, where even last year's game, because they're saying this goes back to 2021, which is obviously the first year they, that he was finally able to beat Ohio State, and then last year's game. If you we rewatch the tape, man, that came down to five plays in that game, and it did seem like they knew exactly what was going to happen yeah. there. It's odd, man. Uh, if they see somebody's laptop, obviously they think – Something else is going on there. It would be crazy. This guy stored all that shit on his laptop, though. Listen, Look, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Uh, everyone still signs. There's a, a story from a couple years ago when Mike Leach allegedly stole signs from Todd Graham <laughs> at Arizona State when Leach was at uh, Washington State. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he called him out the next year. Leach just went above and beyond just being a dickhead with his own signs. <laughs> and he, I mean, I'll show you the video right here. What he it, should do is just put, like, fucking... Oh yeah, he's yeah, just kind of do just it. doing the like heavy metal yeah. like. Oh, that's great. I don't yeah. understand. Do they the college quarterbacks not have the? They do. So what the fuck are they using signs for? Because faster, if you're going kind of like high tempo offense, mm-hmm. you want the entire offense to be on the same page. They delay it inside your helmet for I think it's uh, when the play clock hits like. But it's not that. 25. It's for your linemen. It's for your receivers. Uh, so right. so what you're seeing is college players are fucking incompetent. Then. Yes. So only the quarterback gets it, and I believe no, college, whoever your defensive not, captain is. It's not college players. They don't, don't have it? They don't. Okay, players. then that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. why? Because uh, you, you just can't afford a fucking bang, bang, walkie-talkie? Bang. Right, yeah. yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? It's just the, the current rules it that doesn't, are That whole bang-bang right bang shit doesn't matter. You should know the fucking playbook, man. Or yeah. otherwise, go do something else. Go play fucking rugby. That's how they call plays, though, is through those signs. So, yeah, so no, I understand that, but they don't... I mean, the, the, I, I was... My understanding was they had headphones in, but they don't. No, only one guy does. Yeah. On no, 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 no. No, no, in guys. college, there's no headphones. Oh, no shit. On either side? What I'm saying is if the quarterback or the defensive captain is getting signs and he isn't able to relay that to people... People who are also able to understand it, yeah. none of those people all belong as garbage men or something. But gotcha. if you can't figure that out, get the that's fuck not off the, the field. point. The whole point is like we're gonna run a play in like ten to fifteen seconds. It's not. It's on the three words. Every- it's a formation, and it's a fucking run, pass, or RPO. Like one of those two, and then it's a fucking. But if everybody uh, looks at the same signings. time, and you just see kind of like the coaches with. The signs that they, they usually have something fun. No, I understand up. how it yeah. works, dude. Yeah. It's fucking dumb. Yeah. Uh, it, it, look, you could mic up everybody's helmet and get them done if you wanted to. Or the Neither. signs, it's fine. I think I, the signs I, work perfectly I, fine. I, they, no, they don't, though. 
They don't work perfectly. They do. Fine. If you're stealing them, I guess. Yeah, Switch they're very them. obvious. You, you just know, change them every you know who, week. It's you know what you're deal. not doing is is fucking seeing this. Yeah. If yeah. I'm talking into a fucking headset, you're not seeing that or hearing that. Just NF, change your signs even with every a week. The NFL campaign. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, look again. We'll we'll find out what happens with all this shit. Very very suspicious. Uh, the game that fucking killed me was you guys. God damn it, man. I, I know. I won every game. Didn't uh, you a say point teaser. we covered? Didn't you? What are you talking about? You, well, you did. I didn't. I had Oklahoma down <laughs> to three and a half you, points. That's on you, man. Didn't That's you say you. that was a revenge game or some it shit? It was. Because fuck Dylan, Dylan Gabriel. Gabriel. From what, two, or from two years ago? And fuck Lebby. Um, or was it last year he was there? No, Dylan Gabriel was a quarterback at UCF for three years. Okay. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. What did he leave last year or two years ago? Two, two years, years ago. ago, yeah. Why is Plumley back in there, by the way? Because he's our best quarterback option. Is he really? Yeah. I like that left-handed kid. So what do I. fuck's his name? I mean, Timmy he's... McClain. But he can't throw the ball. He can only run. He no, Plumlee's okay. our best quarterback option. And, uh, I mean, he probably should have won the game. Yeah, well, uh, so we were at our game, obviously, at Ohio State, Penn State. How did this end? Because there was some fans next to us who were kind of watching it on a screen there. Blew a 23-17 lead, um, and then we tied the game eventually. Uh, went for two. It was 31-29. Went for two. Worst two-point conversion call I've ever seen. Uh, you know, when you're on the two-yard line, you want to throw the ball back seven yards so the guy has to go nine yards. Mm. And then give him a pass option that's only one player that's going to be triple covered. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I, there's not enough appreciators of the majestic long lateral, yes. in my opinion. So. But I will say, um, classic Gus Malzahn game, though. He loses games he's not supposed to lose, and then he competes or wins games that he shouldn't win. Yeah. So yeah. that's just that's the Gus Malzahn experience. Well, look, the spread was fucking 18 and a half in this goddamn game, and uh, they almost won. Uh, they almost blew it. And then we'll go to Texas, too, right after that. Quinn Ewers is going to be out with an AC joint for weeks. He's probably looking at a minimum of four weeks here. They're at eight. I don't know how they hang on in this this whole shit there. Suddenly, uh, I don't hate my Kansas State to win the Big 12 ticket. Yeah, you might out. not hate your Oregon to win either. I mean, I, I think you picked Oregon to win the Pac-12. Uh, with Phoenix looking like he did on Saturday, I don't know if something is physically wrong with him, but uh, Oregon could come back and, and win that game in the championship. USC is now out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Utah, good. Utah plays Oregon this week. Seems How about to have found a quarterback? Barnes, I yeah. like Barnes. Pig dude. farmer, I like him. The pig farmer walk on. Yeah, I like him a and lot. They dude. already announced that um, obviously Cam's not coming back this year. Well, that's what we said at the <laughs> game because uh, I said, look, if he doesn't start tonight, he's done for the year. And then immediately right before that game, they shut him Gets down. Gets another for the year, year. eligibility, I guess. That's yeah. fine, but Barnes looks really fucking good. So what do you do if he ends up leading you to the Pac-12 title? How do you sit him out for a year? You don't. You just have Ryzen maybe become like a GA or like an assistant coach. <laughs> he still wants to play. He'll just transfer he'll somewhere transfer, else and yeah. be like a god tier transfer. But maybe he'll end up being like a Sam Hartman type of transfer mm-hmm. somewhere. You know what I mean? Could be. Could be. But uh, Texas struggled in this one, and now and way, uh, Houston, yours is out. Speaking of bad plays, yep. uh, Houston's attempt on fourth, going for it on fourth and one on their final drive in the red zone. Um, very similar situation to your two point conversion, which was yeah. just like, you have a yard to go, just run it up the middle, mm-hmm. probably with your quarterback. Yep. Instead, they, I think they sort of lined up faking that. Then he comes back, rolls out, fucking rifles a ball at the wide receiver guy, and the guy's defended, and the ball was thrown hard, not easy to catch. And obviously, game over right there. Dana Holgers. Now, I understand why we haven't gotten to this yet. And it was the biggest upset of the week because it was on the uh, CW. And was it really? Nobody probably yeah. watched it, but uh, North Carolina. You don't watch Virginia. ACCW? So, no, no, I sure, I sure don't. <laughs> uh, finding these games, by the way, right now is a craft in its own. That should be a, a, a major in college is how to find any college football game on one of these apps or channels. Well, thankfully, YouTube TV, they have the. Uh, just like four box. It's the greatest thing yeah. of all time. Um, but, uh, yeah, the North Carolina game, they're all done now. That was mm. the worst loss you could possibly have to Virginia. They it, win the ACC. They're still in. Yeah, that loss. Into is, the playoffs? That loss. So here's the thing. If they win, if the a one-loss North Carolina wins the ACC and there's only three other one-loss teams and, and they're conference champs. And they beat Florida State. They're in. But if there are four. Four, like uh, if there are an undefeated team and three one like four one loss teams, like they're obviously the first one out. I think it's going to end just like it is right now, one through four. 
Uh, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio Michigan, State, Michigan, Ohio State, and Florida State. Yeah, Florida State. I don't see any evidence to suggest that's going to change. I Ma- think the Pac-12 will get a team in. Maybe Utah. I don't think Washington will do it. Maybe Utah. If this quarterback keeps fucking trucking along like that, they got a real shot. I, there's, there's no way though that you would take a one loss or a one loss non-conference champion Michigan or Ohio State over a one loss conference champion Oregon, right? I don't know, man. To be honest, if, if they're one it, loss, I don't, that's, I don't, that's what I'm saying. Washington I don't, game. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think it's going to be a one loss. Oregon I think, team. I think that uh, Washington will. Well, and maybe, maybe Washington because they'll probably only lose one, right? Yeah, maybe they get in. And also, the know. the dream of the uh, eleven and one Iowa team is now out the Dead. window. Not their fault either. That, that was another one of the worst calls of the weekend. What's wrong with the officiating? And that's a review too, right? Because they called yeah. it on the field a touchdown, and then they went back. And well, PI has got to start being reviewed on in both college and. At least NFL. at the end of the game. Yeah. Just this, show it at the end of the game, go and look at like, it. This is how review started, by the way. In the NFL, it started in the last two minutes, right? Like yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah. six or eight years ago or some shit. Yeah. That was the only time when it was all official based. There was no challenge flag or whatever. That should definitely be the case. Because right? they have in the NBA now, towards mm-hmm. the end, where you can challenge a foul call or not. It's got to be the same with uh, PI, at least towards yeah. the end of the game. Well, that Iowa thing, what they called or whatever, that's like totally not reviewable. Well, they, it's just they a thought. Call. Well, the, the referee thought it was a fair yeah. catch, which he, which he made looking, no he was signal pointing and kind of doing Looking this. at the replay is insane. Yeah, he's pointing and he's like, uh, he's directing traffic. But he's yeah. directing yeah. traffic. Or, he's, this is yeah. a, this is the sign for a fair yeah. catch. Yeah, that was uh, that would definitely. Wasn't and that would have been his second game winning punt return for this year. Yeah. And by the way, also presumably, as far as I know, when people call for a fair catch, they're also yelling something. Yeah. They're not just. Have, I think it's the N word, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is kind yeah, of yeah. like it, if the if the returner is white, it's kind of fucking dicey. It but. sure is. But also, I mean, you just got to give it to him after all those broken tackles. It was an awesome play. Oh, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, it's Incred- like, and there was no space down like, that no. sideline. It's like playing the advantage in soccer. Yeah. It's like, all right, you may be fucked up a little bit, but keep yeah. going. By the way, Air Force is seven and zero. There yep. you go. And put them in the fucking playoff. Seven to six. I and mean, then they, they just have flyovers schedule. the entire game. Every every time the other team's on offense, <laughs> <laughs> there's F-16s going overhead. You could just have uh, what are the the gunships just circling when they're on defense? A C-130 oh. Spectre yeah. gunship, and it makes my dick hard just thinking about. And it. they finally rank JMU. Except What's JMU the, can't make James Madison. James yeah, Madison. Yeah. They can't the win their conference, and they can't make a bowl game. Because they're still on a probation period for moving, being be, being so good that they moved up. They moved up to the from the FCS to the FBS, and there's supposed to be this two year transition period where it's supposed to get you settled and ready for. We've talked big about big Division One football, but because they're so good, they're being punished that they can't play. These we, games. We've talked about this half a dozen times now. Going down, maybe. <laughs> but going up, what the fuck? Man? How is that possible? Like that's a Cinderella. Isn't that good marketing for the fucking NCAA? Yeah, and then they also petition to like overturn the ruling, and the NCAA was like, no, nah. no, no, we're good. They're good on it. They don't need it. Uh, before we get to what happened in the NFL this weekend, and that fucking uh, train wreck for me on mybookie.com. We are brought to you by mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your first deposits. All the way up to $1,000. Man, every single dollar I won on Saturday was lost uh, yesterday all day long, and that didn't stop until the end of the night there. Miami couldn't cover 10 last night, huh? Jesus Christ. Um, this NFL this year has just been coin flips. Uh, you know what? I, we always say bet with us or against us. I bet against me personally right now. In the NFL, I have been horrific this year. The, the Facebook group was full of people being like, God damn. Damn it. Oh, I'm sure. What is going on? I, I'm sure it was. And, and look, I, I, everybody had written the same thing of like, hey, dude, it wasn't you. Vegas is winning all this, this crazy shit. Yes, they are. Uh, Big Dick Denoff talked me into that fucking drunken five grand bet for Ohio State. That came through. He uh, Also, full disclosure, that Cade Stover bet was Denoff. He had called that out, and, uh, and I, that's why you saw it in uh, the Facebook group on Drinking Bros Sports. Mm. It was because of Richard Denoff, the over I imagine 46. you teased the lines, didn't you? What's up? Did you tease the Lions? I did not. Okay. Uh, well, oh, the Lions? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and every card. Yeah, you every teased card. every card. I lost card all of it. I, destroyed I lost you, right? I had it up to like 17 in one card, <laughs> yep. dude. And, and it, what the fuck happened? Uh, bro, we'll, we'll get to it. But uh, bet with us or against us over there. Great games tonight, man. Not only do we have a, a Monday Night Football game in the 49ers, which I'm going to go all in on, uh, but we got the Phillies tonight. Um, I don't even care 
who they're playing. I don't even want to tell you Where's who he they're going? playing there. Um, because to me, the Arizona Diamondbacks don't count. I do not want to see them in the World Series. Uh, oh, man. Please, Phillies, win this. Well, just... I'll tell you this. Uh, Aaron Nola had a fucking pretty rocky regular season. Um, even towards the end, I think two of his last six starts were pretty rough, but four were good. Okay. In the playoffs, pretty fucking good. I mean, he's been, I think his ERA in the playoffs so far is .96. Yeah, that's right, with a .75 whip. And Wheeler himself has been pretty historic levels of good this postseason. So are you saying to bet on the Phillies tonight on my bookie? Yes. I'm telling you that Aaron Nola's closing this game out tonight. Okay, perfect. And I, don't be surprised if... Uh, if you're going to bet on somebody to have a home run tonight, I would take Trey Turner. Okay. Uh, look, Harper's been on fire. It's a blast. I'm putting money on the Phillies tonight as well. You can place your bets at mybookie.com. Heart, my heart, too, wants uh, the Rangers uh, tonight. I want Balboa versus Creed here. Trey Turner the finals. is. Let's do it. Against uh, Kelly, the guy that's pitching for Arizona tonight, Trey Turner is 10 for 22 in his career. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. All right. See if that's a prop bet on my bookie. I'll head over there after the show. Uh, and as always, if you want to go to any of these games, including tonight's game, if you're in Philly and want to go to the game, we got tickets for sale. DrinkingBrosTickets.com, same as StubHub. Uh, you can get anything on there. Rodeo tickets, concerts, World Series, playoffs, uh, all of it. Dude. Game 7 tonight. If you want to go to Game 7, there's tickets available right now. They're expensive, obviously. But uh, we got everything on there in DrinkingBrosTickets.com. Uh, and right. and the other one is uh, Houston and Texas, right? So yes. there's going to be World Series games in Texas no matter what after this. But I got to think the, the Houston's probably going to win this, to be honest. Uh, as I don't much want, as I hate, I hate to them. admit it, uh, Scherzer is, is not being very good. No. So let's start there. Why are you going Scherzer game seven after this long of an injury? You've been out, and he looked like he got shelled the other night. Yeah, well, he's Why gonna, would you do this? He, he's going to be – Two to three innings tops, one time through the order. The bullpen game for yeah. sure. Um, so that's why he's going to come out and give whatever he's got left in his arm. It's like fucking uh, uh, Gary Busey and Little Big League or whatever, fu- the rookie or whatever. Rookie rookie of the year. They're going to yeah, bring yeah, yeah, yeah. a Valde out of the pen on yeah. zero days rest. Yeah. Um, Christian Javier, though, is one of the best post-season, postseason pitchers of this era. Like, not, and it's, it, it, I don't know that anybody's really close because it, uh, he certainly benefits from the amount of times that Houston's been in the playoffs over the last since his, he came up in like 2018 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he is one of the best postseason pitchers we have seen since the early 2000s. Well, right? and, Consistently and great. In this series, he's 2-0 and with a 1.69 ERA. Hard yeah. to argue against it. I mean, his, his career in, in 16 postseason games um, – his career fucking whip is .92. His career ERA is 2.08. Uh, he struck out 60 people in 43 innings. He is fucking elite in the playoffs. This As good as this Rangers team has been, and look, they scored fucking 10 runs last night, and I want them to win because I just want to see somebody new in the fucking World Series. I don't want to see a repeat. Um, as much as I would like them to win, I don't think that this is a good matchup. So wow. I, my money's going on Houston. I hope uh, the power of Creed is able to uh, take these guys higher tonight. And, uh, and I want to see the Phillies in there. And then truthfully, I want to see the Phillies win it all, man. I, I, watching Harper play every night, we were lucky to see it. And goddamn, dude, I, I root for him every single game. I'd, li- I'd, I'd love, and I think it'd be good for baseball if Harper got yeah. the fucking You know what I love about him most is like he gets fucked up and comes in to play first base, and he's playing elite first base, a position he's, he's never played really in well his entire career. Yeah. Never played it once, even in high school or anything. He was a catcher in high school. It's the first time he's ever played that position. He got two months on the job training, and now he makes every fucking play. And, and he's, he's got five home runs. He's got the, uh, five home runs. Throw. Five home runs in the postseason yeah. already. I mean, almost concussed their catcher, probably. It, it, yeah, that was a bad that that was just like I don't I don't blame people. What are you like, supposed to do? People are like, like it's a dirty play. Like, what is he supposed to do? Stand there and, and wait? Get the fuck out of the way, man. As so Jack, that's what baseball used to be. What was his name? Jack Harper from Major League Two. Oh yeah. Get yeah. off the tracks when the train's coming through. <laughs> 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 Fucking loser. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. a blast to watch. That place will be rocking. Uh I wish they well, it's a game seven. I guess you couldn't switch the order, but uh I would like to see that Philly crowd at night. Just so they can go bug fucking the way of the World Series, but you you got a game seven, so I understand it. Also yeah, so my uh, the the time. the fucking charity I work with, one of them, Save Our Allies, the one that we extracted a bunch of people out of Afghanistan, we're extracting them out of 
Israel right now in Lebanon. I think we may have to start doing it for Philly if they win. Yeah. yeah. Extracting citizens out because <laughs> they that place is going to burn to the fucking ground. It will. It will. But it's a fun team, man. And uh, it just bombs away out of those guys. Yeah. Uh, so I'm rooting for those guys tonight. I'm going to put some money on uh, on each of them. Creed is, is just a heart bet there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're no longer the Rangers. It's just Creed yeah. at this point. Uh, either way, fucking game seven. I'm all in tonight. Couldn't be a better night of uh, television for sports. Uh, we'll switch on over to the NFL. Let's get into tonight's games before we get into uh, this weekend's disasters here so I can get your picks. God damn it. That spread go up to seven. I don't fucking bet it. All right. Uh, 49ers at the Vikings. Spread is, uh, it was six and a half yesterday. It is now up to seven points here. Uh, D'Anthony, who you got? This is Kirk Cousins in prime time. McCaffrey's playing. He is. Yep. San Francisco minus seven. Yeah. I might buy half a point. I am. I I, will definitely buy. Is Debo and a a Kittle still kind of banged up too? Let's see. Kittle's had a terrible year. He's on my fantasy team. Um, Debo's out. Only showed up for for one game. Debo's Debo's out. out. Debo's out. Um, Greenlaw is questionable. Trent Williams, their offensive tackle, who is one of the best in the league, is uh, doubtful. But Justin Jefferson is also out. Yeah, Jefferson's Mm -hmm. out, and so is Naylor, their second best guy. Yeah. Yeah. uh, I'll take. I'll, I'll probably buy half a point, but same. Uh, what about you, Ducko? All right, um, I think the Niners win, but I, I'll take Kirk Cousins in prime time to cover. Oh God! <laughs> Has he ever covered in prime time at home? I don't know. <laughs> They're zero and three at home this year. Yeah, they not are. that that means anything, but no, they are zero and three. At home uh, tickets are fifty nine dollars. If you're you're bored in Minnesota tonight, by the way, on yeah, drinkerbrostickets dot com. Uh, what do you got, Bob? I'm just not going to overthink it. Just take the Niners. Whatever. Same. I wouldn't even bother about. I wouldn't even bother by half point. If you push, you push. But I mean, like they should win by more than that. I am because I'm chasing right now. I'm, I'm very desperate. I would take buy a half a, a point bad and spot take to be. Niners yeah, minus six and a half. I, w- I would probably, if, as far as props go, I would probably take an Ayuk over for receiving yards. Um, because the guy, what, I, what's Minnesota's lock? Their cornerback that's really good, and he's out too. Uh, yeah, they, they've got a ton of people, yeah. out, a ton of injuries, or he's doubtful. Team. I don't know if he's out or not. Uh, I haven't checked today. I but. don't see the 49ers <laughs> losing two in a row here, um, unless they figured out Brock Purdy in some type of film study or something. We'll see. I mean, the way here's how you figure him out: take uh, uh, Debo out of the game, and then fucking Christian McCaffrey out of the game. Oh, look, I figured out. <laughs> Brock Purdy, no, you took out two of the best offensive players in football. We'll see you tonight. <laughs> uh, the rest of the week, though, was just a goddamn disaster. Especially here. how the Eagles were cheating last. I don't know if you remember me talking about yeah, that. Yeah, really. let's get that. into it. <laughs> I had so much. I had $500 on last night's game. The over was easy. Like, who, who fucking cares? It was super simple. I had plus 10 on the Dolphins. Plus 10. And they couldn't fucking cover it. Soft. It Soft Miami team. 11 plays. That were that guy. I it's a it's a parody account for uh, Mike McDaniel's, mm-hmm. but uh, it was eleven horrific calls in this game. And yes, well, the so, Eagles are going to get them. They're the best team in the NFC. Some of the most critical ones. So that penalty on Christian Wilkins, mm-hmm. who by the way has never roughed the passer in his entire career. He's a goofball. I mean, we've played his shit on here before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He took one half step. Let up and kind of pushed him to the ground. You get two steps. That's what the fucking rule book says. It was a brutal right? hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He may never recover. Uh, so he made that fucking bullshit call. Jalen Carter's flop, his Shaquille yeah. O'Neal flop oh, yeah. on the ground that was for terrible. 15 yards. That was terrible. And then he called uh, that oh. the one that took the TD away from Miami as well, which was what ended up being a 14-point swing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. His crew, this guy, Dwayne Haight, his crew was suspended – from the ACC championship game for unethical refereeing. And everybody's right. talking about Just the, a couple years ago. The head referee in this game uh, grew up, you know, 30 miles outside of Philly and is a huge Philly so fan. there's weirdly – so Delaware County, Philadelphia, between NFL refs and NBA refs, there's this weird pipeline where, like, between Tim Donahue and yep. the NBA, and there's, like, a shit ton of other NBA referees and yeah. NFL mm-hmm. refs that are from the same area, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, it does when you think about the fucking mob. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> it makes this, is, this is like the beginning sense. of The Departed, essentially, <laughs> yeah, where yeah. Nicholson's just talking to <laughs> young Matt Damon and a group of other kids. Right. When I say it doesn't make sense, it makes a little Yeah. Sense. So I think, as far as the Dolphins go, there's a great story of a team that overcomes an entire referee field being against them. They're called the Titans. And their coach came out. And he just said, 
Not another yard. Yeah. And it's all you have to do. That they called holding on every yeah. play. They didn't get another yard. Yeah. yeah. Not one yard. So the Dolphins are soft. Could they could never overcome the Eagles, let alone racism. And yeah. Look, the Dolphins have gotten the two best teams they've played. They've gotten worked. Yeah, they've like, beaten they teams with like a combined record of five and twenty four or yep. something. And then they play the Bills, get absolutely fucking destroyed. Play the Eagles, get destroyed. Um, and then, god damn it, dude! There's so many losses here on my I'm, I'm on this thing. Like at literally every game, the Bills losing to the Patriots. Dude, this was just the NFLiest NFL week mm-hmm. god, that ever NFL. Who had uh, Tyson Badgett leading <laughs> the Bears to roll the the Raiders? I don't even know who he is. Shepherd's College. I, yeah, oh, that's the guy we were joking about last week. Yeah, yeah, the dude. I don't know. He's from West Virginia, I guess. His dad is a professional arm wrestler. Drop thirty points on yes. uh, on the Raiders. This, that's the football I want. Pig farmers and arm wrestlers. His dad is electric, by the way. There's an inter- <laughs> <laughs> there's is he an- just an actual over the top character? Yeah, he's a fucking just a dude. Yeah, there's a video of him. Uh, I forget what game it wasn't. It wasn't from. It was I think one of his college games, and they interview him on the sideline, and he arm wrestles a guy with a microphone in his hand and destroys him. <laughs> he's like amazing. a twenty eight time. Arm wrestling champion. That's, that's amazing. Look, they, they ended up winning it there. Uh, the Giants with Tyrod Taylor won last night. I mean, it was just awful. The Lions, QB controversy though, the in Lions. New York? It's yeah, that, yeah, why not? It's that why time not? of year. There's like whatever happens in the quote-unquote dog days of baseball, it, it starts around week six for the NFL, too. It's just the weirdest shit happens. Between weeks, week six and 11, you will see crazy upsets, dumb shit, bad coaching, it's so weird, man. But the also, Ravens Lions 38 to 6. And at one point, this was a fucking 35 to 0 game, dude. I mean, it, it, can can we just ad- admit that any uniform created after 1996 is a mistake? Yeah. And just yes. go, go back, back to, to, to Kelly Green, go back to all those the Giants old Giants uniforms were sick. Yeah, the yeah. Giants uniforms are good. The Eagles e- yeah, even the night, I think sick. even in college they should bring back all the old fucking like uh sailor logos and shit. Why didn't the Dolphins wear their uniforms with like the actual the Dolphins Dolphin. football helmet. Yeah. 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 Uh, but that, that Lions team, man, I mean, it. I, I don't. I, that, They're fine. The ra- like- so L- Lamar Jackson is like uh, Russell Westbrook. Every now and again, he's going to come out and fucking rock a game, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you're just going to lose. They let him throw. Yeah. They did. That they should. Uh, and they he's should. better when he throws. I, I agree. Uh, he had 357 and three touchdowns in this game, and it wasn't fucking close. I mean, the Lions couldn't do dick. I mean, they also the had 146 game. yards on the ground as a team. It, it was spread out between Edwards Hill and Lamar Jackson, but, you know. But 357 yards passing to 10 different receivers. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Right. Uh, <laughs> didn't watch that Packers-Broncos game, thankfully. Uh, and Did then, anybody watch that? I no. Uh, and then, then the other most impressive win, besides the Eagles last night, was uh, the Chiefs to me. Um, if he keeps dating Taylor Swift, they win the Super Bowl. Taylor I've Swift. said it a million times. They put times. up the graphic where it's like Travis Kelsey averages 100 yards at every game she attends. He might win the MVP. Yeah. This sh- I, have you seen his numbers? They're insane. <laughs> he can't stop. Dude. Last night, Mahomes had 424 in this game, four touchdowns. He had 179 yards and 12 receptions. Jackson dude. Jackson also made his way to the uh, the box. He's so 100. I heard about Jackson it. Mahomes was there. Yeah, yeah they yeah, must have there. smuggled him in in a baby carrier. <laughs> he, he does, but they refused like, to show him. What? How did? How did he get in? All that other know, stuff. He looks like a long baby to me. He's, he does. He's huge though. He, he is, is like six he's eight, a yeah. long baby. Yeah. That's yeah. what he looks like. A very um, long baby. But I do have a new policy. Any social media account that posts anything about Taylor Swift at a Chiefs game blocked immediately <laughs> yeah i'm like this is the only way to stop this shit her is and to britney, start affecting her and britney them. are besties now they have a they have their own special handshake that yeah they it's do. too bad it didn't end with them fucking well blowing their brains out let's be real that's you know that's where i was going with that yeah right? of course if they had just jumped out of the box together or if uh they had done the little dance and then taylor grabs britney's baby and just chucks it down <laughs> into the crowd i saw some people bring this up but uh maybe we unfairly Kind of nope. grouped Brittany Mahomes with Jackson. No, no, she's a cunt. You don't remember her like slinging water and drinks and shit on fans. Yeah, I remember that? She's listen. Wait. That would play in Philly. In Philly, yeah. yeah. So you're ba- you're, you're making City. your judgment based on the trash you are. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta accept who you are, right? Like, yeah, fair uh, enough. Uh, God, fair like, enough. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, I I could uh, I could do that in Chechnya. Yeah, like yeah. that's here. You know, it's like it'd be fine in Chechnya. It'd be fine in. Uh, mm-hmm. But the Chiefs I just got to shave my mustache and I'll be good. <laughs> You're yeah. fine. The Chiefs are 6 and 1 though, dude, and rolling and they look like they could win the Super Bowl again, which is crazy to Chargers me. Chargers stink. Chargers, Chargers don't stink. I, it's their, look, their coach stinks. Um 
They got to get him the fuck out of there. Uh, Eckler was out again. Uh, they've got a bunch of injuries. Mike Williams is out with an ACL. They're one of their best receivers. Herbert's is a out. loser. Herbert could be a loser. He's starting to remind me of Josh Allen now at this point, where it's just like, all right, are you are you ever going to fucking win and actually mm, do something? I think Josh Allen is the entire Bills team. I think he makes up for a lot of uh, just holes in that squad. Yeah, and I can see that. You yeah. got a great receiver in Diggs, and then you That's got two fine. great tight ends there. I don't think their line's good. They, don't, they can't run the ball. Well, they don't have a running back. Yeah, I mean, they've never had a running back, and that's that's the, the front office I don't office think the coaching's problem. very good. You know. McDermott was not a good DC at, no, with the Eagles. No, I, maybe not. Who knows? But Doesn't it seem like we have this conversation about the Bills every year? Every all, year. There's always one unit that's fucked up, right? Not, not, not even necessarily an entire unit, but – one year, it's the pass defense is really good, the pass rush is really good, and the and the corners are really good, but they can't stop the run. Then this year, they can stop the run, they can't stop the pass. There's always something wrong with these guys, and now they don't have a fucking running back. Not that they've ever – when's the last time they had a really legit running back? What was that dude's name? C.J. Spiller? <laughs> Maybe Herman no, 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 no. Thomas? No, no, no. Like, just a couple of years ago. What the fuck okay. was his name? Uh, Marshawn Lynch? No, motherfucker. <laughs> he was there. God damn it. For Loved the Applebee's. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. Because uh, they had Singletary for a while. He was... Yes, eh, eh, Singletary. He was all right. Uh, Thurman Thomas. Lesha- they had LaShawn McCoy Finger. at the end of his career. Yeah. But that no, was at the end. Yeah, yeah, that was the end. He already gave his years to the Eagles. Let's see. It's been a while. LaShawn McCoy was pretty good. Well, he was, but he again, he was with the Eagles and then just popped up on the Bills at the end of his career. Yeah, but he rushed for 1,300 yards he, with the he Bills. He was there for a couple of years. True. He, he, true. he went 900, 1,300, 1,100, and then it kind of tailed off after that. But they had a good three-year run, but not anymore. Threw I mean, a couple hose-only parties. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. Well, what, what else What else do you do there? No. You invite guys to your parties? You gay, bro? You gay, bro? You gay, bro? <laughs> Uh, but I, I, it's hard not to say the Chiefs at this point again. Jesus Christ! If that relationship continues, they they're going to. I've said this they before. They're going all. to. They, the NFL is going to do whatever they can to have Taylor Swift in a box. I agree. Cutting to her at the yep. Super Bowl every fucking five. It's minutes. wild though. He's in every commercial now though too. Mm. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Can we talk about the commercials he's in? Because that seems like a, a joke in itself. It's all the companies that I hate the most. The Travisification of America. Did you see the new one? It's uh, the, his. He's the new spokesperson for Directv. Yeah. Now, as a guy who had Directv for 15 years, simply for the NFL package, I hate their company so goddamn much. Even to cancel it towards the end when they lost the NFL package, I just sit on the phone for an hour and 48 minutes. They try to wait you out and get oh, yeah. you to not be able you have to, to send cancel. back the dish. Rage oh, quit. all of it. You got to yeah. send back everything that ever happened there. Uh, it is the fucking worst goddamn company of all time. So now he's doing that, and those commercials are new. Obviously, the Pfizer ones, the ones that they were showing during the Eagles game last night were so horrific, those new Pfizer commercials, that I was like, is this, it seemed like a joke. Like, it seemed like a parody of well, what you it's, would do. It's a joke because you know you're being lied to, right? Yeah, I, and I don't know who's getting it because the, the. Did you see the new ones last night? It was a two for one. They're calling it the two for one now. Get so a the latest, shot, get a thing. A bogo. Do you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. latest booster, the latest COVID booster. Do you know what percentage of the adult population in America got it? Isn't it sixteen percent or something like that? Anybody else want to take a guess? Uh, uh-uh. so I'm gonna guess lower. That sounds. That feels the way this direction is 2%. going. Two percent. Two percent. Yeah. Everybody's done with that particular lie. We're on to the next one. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We got yeah. no time for that old lie. We're on to the next lie. But last night was the two for shot, and then he's got both band aids on because he got. When's the, flu the last shot time any of you guys shot? got a flu shot? I, that's, that's I never got a flu shot before. I've never either. had a flu Ever. shot in my life. No, but Ever. It's, I, you know, I think it's a thing with like an old the generation above us. Maybe this is totally mm. anecdotal. It but, is. But my dad, every year, yep. he's like, "Hey, don't forget." Like way before COVID, was like, mm. "Hey, don't forget to get yeah. your flu my, shot." My parents did this. Did he get the one that went into his nose or something? Uh, oh, like the oh that spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he gets it sounded. <laughs> yeah, the I like hole. that, dude. Yeah. Right through the dick hole. <laughs> what kind of PSI is on that thing? <laughs> it's that a you lot. can sound. You got to get lot. all the way down to the base. Uh, the noises he makes. I guess it depends on the size of your dad's hog. Too. Now, if they had that going through Kelsey's <laughs> hog in the commercial, oh, I, would, I would get. I might get a COVID vaccine. <laughs> 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 By the way, he's not having a better season than he even had last year, so I don't want to hear any more about this Taylor Swift. Show. But every game, really, she shows up. Yeah, he, last, he's on. Game. He's on pace. Uh, maybe a couple more receptions. He's, only, he's on pace for seven he more receptions, but 100 less yards. He missed a game. I, no, I he played 17 last year. I, no, he missed this year. Yeah, yeah. again this year. Yeah. I, can't, I just need yeah. to go back to... And, but he's only he's only got a third of the touchdown, so he may get to the same basic numbers, but he's not going to be better than he was last year. But yeah. they probably will win the Super Bowl. He might. He I might. mean, if they... 
if that defense keeps showing up like they've been showing up, that's the fucking difference. It's forget about Mahomes and Kelsey are gonna Mahomes and Kelsey. That defense, especially since Jones came back, holy fucking shit. They look good. And then the teams that we thought were going to be good in the AFC will look like shit. The Bills and the Dolphins, once they've played high-level competition, they've been beaten. The Bengals were the other contender. And they look like shit. The the Dolphins are missing their two best defensive weapons right now. So I'm not that. Well, like Wilkins pretty good, too. But they're two two of their better defensive players that have been out for the last couple of weeks. So I'm not going to judge them. But regardless of those penalties last night that weren't Mm. called, the Eagles still had no problem moving the fucking ball last night. We thought the Jags were going to be good. The Jags are kind of bouncing back. They're like 5-2 now. So Do they they win? But it's just like now the question becomes, though, uh, uh, KC has a lead. So the question becomes, is anyone going to catch them? Because how much do you trust? You know, the Bills and uh, Bengals are one thing because they've kind of done it before. They've been there before. But how much do you trust the Jags or the Dolphins to win an Arrowhead in January? I don't trust anybody to win I'm an sorry. Arrowhead in January. Super Bowl Me winning either. coach, Dougie P. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. That, that's not going to happen. Jaguars aren't going to win. A Jaguars play. win the Super Bowl. No, absolutely not. Uh, but yeah, they look great. If that relationship continues, I'm with you, Dan. There's no way that Goodell doesn't try to get her in that box. He they, said they that. They try to hire or, uh, Bob. They try to hire her for the Super Bowl. I mean, the, the next best thing is to, to those cutaways. Um, and since we're talking about it and these cutaways and all the shit that's going on, the media timeouts in the NFL and college football now are okay. so fucking okay. ridiculous. I don't ever that- want to hear a pace of play argument or anything like that. Mm. You just keep jamming more and more Travis Kelsey commercials, I guess, into I every agree. fucking again. <laughs> I agree. Thing. Welcome to being a golf fan. This is, <laughs> it's more commercials than But at, but at least they yeah. overlay golf, over the action. Yes, at golf will go at I'm least fine split with that. screen. Sometimes they barely show any shots. At golf is a joke. Um, but yeah, every sport is eventually going to become this, right? Because like nobody's going to make money except off live sports, mm. and they're just going to sell more and more ads. That's exactly what I said to everybody around us at the game. But being in the stadium now... And I'll apologize to Notre Dame because I said this a few weeks ago when we were there. They just kept trotting out all these fucking people or whatever. They did the same thing at Ohio State. And you realize you have the media timeouts and the commercials that are at home. You still need to make sure something, something is going on on the field for. Yeah, you you got to honor like the team from 1962, like the women's like, basketball yeah, team. Yeah, dude, what we the fuck? So we, Dan and I were joking. I didn't care like, about you then. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Much less oh, now. Just like a, yeah, like they'll bring out literally like I've been at a Mizzou game where I think they brought out they're like <laughs> they're like you're uh, like top five SEC finishing Missouri swim and dive team. Mm. And I'm just like I'm getting a beer. The, fair, to, to be fair, in. the only ones they brought out that made any sense were the reigning doubles champions yeah. from NCAA. That was the only one that was within the last 30 fucking years. Exactly. But you've you've now got to entertain the people in the stadiums themselves, especially mm-hmm. these big ones. Um, and then the, the TV timeouts at home. So what you're not seeing, and, and two, on the field for, for a lot of these big games is both teams, because uh, we've been to every fucking big game of the year now, are trotting out uh, the receivers and their backup quarterbacks to do these drills during those media timeouts because it's so long. It really does throw off the rhythm of the team's Our, offense, in my opinion. Can a student at this university hit a 30-yard field goal to win a $25 gift card to Hungry Howie's Pizza? That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. And, it, and it the answer is always no. He can it, never yeah, get it no. off the ground. It does fuck with the rhythm. It really it fucks with, um, you know, because, like, the, your biggest thing is, you know, the offense keeping the defense tired. Yep. Keeping the, so these def- the defense has these, like, baked-in breaks. It's the same thing that happens to an extent a lot of times um, – in, pl- in the NCAA tournament, for example, which is, to me is a bigger pace uh, issue than the NBA in terms no, of like, it's a bigger factor. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So now when you've got like when you got like you you're running the other team and you start running them off the court, they have baked in timeout. They have a little bit more time to get their shit back, and it it's yeah, it's a huge factor. It really is, man. There's something's got to be done about it. Uh, I agree with you in baseball. Look, Manfred figured it the fuck out, dude. It's enjoyable. It's fast. Uh, you're in its old. I mean, you're in these games now. I don't know how much difference it made. It's a 15 minute per game difference from mm-hmm. last year to this year mm-hmm. for baseball. Yeah, it I like for, for rock, average though. game length. Is, I, there, but is that like, really? But like, I feel like for a fan, so just sitting in a lot of these big major league baseball games, mm-hmm. right? When you're sitting there and there's a running clock right next to the batter's box, where you're like, all right, great. There's three minutes and 48 seconds until you got to get off the field and switch out the thing in between pitches. It's just the fan experience feels. I like fast. that a reliever has to come in for three. I, 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 I do like that. I do like that. But you know what we have seen? We've seen more injuries 
this year for starting and relief pitchers than in the history of baseball. In in baseball? Yep. Okay. And do, it's going to continue. Think, well, do you think it's because they have to speed it up? Yep. Okay. No, arms have gotten softer. That is true. Evolution. Nolan Ryan used to say that your arm will rust before it wears out. He was the first guy to get into the gym back in the 60s mm-hmm. uh, and then doubled up when he ran into Tom House and fucking uh, uh, California back in the day. Yeah, people are pussies these days, man. I mean, what the fuck? They, we, we remember the guys that had shorter careers that threw hard every fucking pitch, threw mm-hmm. a bunch of complete games, like Sandy Koufax, yeah. for example. Yep. Could have pitched a lot longer than he did. But he, w- he yeah, he was born at the wrong time. He would have, well, not really, because he would have just been Clayton Kershaw. Randy Johnson still a whole pitched thing. for a long time. Yeah, but. He did? <laughs> yeah. The thing that there steroids. Was a rumor he was the t- the two the things that forever. steroids oh, I'm do. I'm sorry, I will not, I will not accept that. <laughs> You should. You the, should. The two things that steroids uh, do the most for professional athletes, one, believe it or not, is eyesight, right? Yeah. It, it drastically improves your eyesight. Uh, and two, and, and your reaction time as well. And two, it's for injury. That's why Tatis Jr. got popped last year. He was trying to get back on the fucking field. Faster, yeah. But there's... It improves your eyesight. So oh maybe yeah. that's why he got into photography. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be. But that's, that was the difference for... So Barry Bonds was already elite. If you look at, um, like, Hall of Fame-level baseball players from the last 30 years, they, on average, they have 2015 vision. The guys that are super good, like mm-hmm. guys that have both 500 plus 3,000 hits... 2010. Shit, you know does that I mean, mean Ken Griffey Jr. was also on steroids now that he's in photography? <laughs> Look at his body. He didn't even like to go to. I know. He had, no. Yeah, he didn't yeah. even. Like, by the time he was 33, he was getting fat, dude. Yeah, literally fat. <laughs> I was like, what the, the fuck? Do you remember, though, around that time, though, people wouldn't even lift, but they'd, like, get the cream and stuff and just start rubbing themselves? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, oh, it'll work, right? No, you gotta work you out. Gotta, still. You gotta do a little bit. There's a rumor that Ted Williams had 25 vision. Oh, Maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he used to he used to tie. He told this story one time uh, on a show I was watching. It was an old baseball. It was like it was a se- I think it was a segment on this week in baseball. And he would talk about how he would know he was right on a ball when he because he would smell the wood burning off of his bat and only happened when you. So you, if you if you foul a ball back and it goes straight back, that means your timing was perfect. Right. Yeah. Like straight back. And he was like, oh, I just missed that one. And he would be like, I could tell because I could smell the wood burning on my bat. I'm like. You're a fucking mutant. Yeah, yeah dude. Literally. Love like, that, that dude, you could drop him into a fucking baseball game in any era, and he would light people the fuck up. So I, same with Bryce Harper, I think. Well, you yeah. could drop that guy I, I, in any that era. That's in the current era. That's, that's probably true, yeah. I mean, anybody that's successful in the current era would have dominated back then. But that's how sports him. works. Unfreeze him. I know. His Just head take is it, somewhere. Take his brain out and put it in Ronald Acuna's body. His head is somewhere. <laughs> It exists out there, frozen in time. You know what we didn't talk about is uh, Tyson Bagent, Bagent, yep, lighting up the fucking. Oh, we did. Yeah, we, yeah, we talked we just, about. We it. really that gave Sean to his dad. It. Really, yeah, we it twenty eight times. We talked about it there. They, uh, yeah, but they you guys, you champ. guys talked too much about his dad. Well, uh, I actually, I, I, he's I only it. known for his dad. Yeah, where did this? Where did he go to school? Shepherd College. Shepherd College, which is D two, D two, D two. Nobody's ever heard of it. Hey, him. man. I think. I, well, it's, see, here's the thing. And this it's is either West Virginia or Pennsylvania. Th- it's West Virginia, and this is what I'm sick of: is all this sports nepotism. You know, he's coasting on daddy's pro sports money, yeah. yeah. And now he doesn't have to get a real job; he can just work out and try to play quarterback. Hey, he's one and one in the NFL, bud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll switch on over to UFC because uh, we were on a flight; mm. we did not get to watch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming you did. Yeah. Uh, how were the fights on Saturday? It was weird, man. Yeah. Whole whole day was weird because uh obviously it was in dubai yeah what time do they start there it was so i was in philly so it was like 2 p.m is when the fight like the main card started okay yeah so there was a, a the doctor was insane he was calling a couple fights like uh, the johnny walker fight he just he got kneed in the head illegally asked johnny walker where he was and he said the desert and there's obviously like a language barrier because johnny walker is brazilian mm-hmm. and um he's right they are in the desert <laughs> and he called the fight because he's like, you don't know where you are. And he's just, he was so pissed. He's like, I needed an I thought he got hit in the beanbag or something. Oh, that, that was a, so that was a different fight. Mm. The guy gets hit in the nuts and is like, it, I guess it, it got to the point where it, like it lumped up and it was really bad for a sack. And the doctor was just like, you didn't get hit in the balls. <laughs> he just kept, he's just like, no, no, I didn't. And he was crying in pain. And he's just like, no. Get up. Suck it up, get up. Did he show him? <laughs> I, would have, I would have showed him. I would have showed him my nutsack I, and yeah, said, right? hey, here, here, if we're going to do this, so, we're doing this. But, the, I mean, obviously, Islam knocked out Volk with a head kick. Uh, was that expected? No. I, was uh, I mean, say. I mean, expected that he would probably win by a probably decision. Probably win, but not. Not by a head kick. Not by a head kick. No. And then um, uh, Usman versus um, 
Chemayev was really good. Chemayev kind of gassed himself out early, but was dominant early. Usman hung in there, went to the decision. Chemayev won. Um, but if it was a five-round fight, Usman probably would have won that mm-hmm. fight. So why wasn't it? Because there was some controversy afterwards of, of, hey, why didn't you make this five rounds? You probably would have won this it fight. It was offered. Uh, Usman, though, was coming in uh, off the couch, short mm-hmm. notice, and he didn't want to do five rounds. But in hindsight, he was like, oh, man, I probably should have done five fights or five rounds because Chemayev gets gassed. Easy. I wonder what the pay-per-views are like for this. Do people give a shit about watching these Dagestanis fight? Yeah. Uh, this one, I think, yes, because the, the whole Islam card Volk. was stacked. Well, yeah. Islam pound and Chemayev are the best of all of them. Not but, not the best in UFC, but they're the best of those guys. So, yeah. And Islam and uh, Volk are the two pound-for-pound pound best in the UFC right now. So they're yep. kind of fighting for that title as long with lightweight title. But Volk, you know, also didn't look great because he was coming off the couch let me yeah. notice kind of good though that uh he didn't win that because i'd, I'd rather them just kind of fight in their own weight Did, classes okay not hold up the the title fights for the two divisions yeah what do you exp- what do you write like a I, I read an article that volk was worried about getting taken down that's why he was leaning that's why he got kicked in the head any truth to that i didn't watch it no fights. um he's gotten caught a couple times with a head kick mm. uh kind of if you watch film the last time he got knocked out, I think was it was it wasn't in the UFC, but it was uh, I think in like 2013 or something. He got knocked out with a head kick, and then Max also hit him with a head kick that kind of stunned stunned him. I think in the second fight, but yeah, uh, it was kind of expected though. Islam is probably going to surpass Habib as the best lightweight of all time, eventually. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this weekend coming up, I believe it's Ngano versus Tyson Fury there. Mm-hmm. Any interest in watching that? I, I want to watch it. Kind of, yeah. They, they've had some really good uh, promo videos for it. Tyson Fury is a fucking maniac, oh, man. Yeah. He's, he's fun. They're both just fun. Yeah. And, like, the Nagano story, just going from, like, working in a fucking diamond mine to coming on, over on a raft and becoming this, like, I mean, a world champion in the UFC. And he gets, he's getting paid now. Good for him. I think it worked out for him. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you. I don't, I don't know if you did the promo video thing on purpose, but uh, shout out. Those are my our best friends. Uh, Hannah Lux Davis. No, they're those. awesome. Yeah, those are yeah. like some of the best promo videos. I've they're ever ridiculous. Seen I mean, yeah. he's he's good. For Fury's fight. good talent to work with, anyways, but they did a good job on those. They did. Uh, shout out to Hannah Lux Davis who directed those in a uh, Brandon Montfiglio. It's, it's a it was a those. really good balance of like kind of serious, like this is a fight that's going to happen, and also just displaying their goofy fucking personality. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's very clear they're friendly mm-hmm. so yeah 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 um I look I, I think they're both likable people which mm-hmm. is why i think the the pay-per-view numbers will be pretty good for this and it, the funniest thing so f- the fight game's been hilariously unpredictable this year just with like the sean stricklands of the world winning the title beating izzy and just like things that you fully did not expect to happen like sean o'malley beating al joe by knockout it, with tyson fury already having his next fight lined up mm-hmm. would it not be the funniest thing if just Nagani just catches him. Could you imagine? I mean, I would shock the entire world. Is this a title fight? No. Uh, no. It's like an exhibition. It's but an if exhibition. he knocks him out. Yeah. If he knocks him out on accident, that would fuck up everything for them. I, mean, I, I don't know that it would be on accident. Nagani is definitely trying to knock him out. I, I, I think so, too. Um, all I am saying is uh, bet the over of three in that one. If you can on my book, you over there. To carry him, yeah. What or, is it, eight? Uh, I believe it's a 10 round fight. Mm. Uh, but bet the over of, of three if it goes past three. Uh, but we're looking forward to that. And then is there UFC this weekend, too, on top of it? Yeah, two weeks. I think there's a week off, and then uh, Derek Lewis is fighting um, Jaltain Almeida. So All right. It's Where probably going to get ran through. I think it's a – I don't know if it's an Apex card or if it's, like, a local show. But, uh, I mean, the next pay-per-view is obviously John Jones, Stipe. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, November 11th, I believe. Yeah, in Madison Square Garden up there. Uh, NBA starts this week. Uh, it's strange. I, there doesn't seem to be that uh, hype or buzz around the NBA like there used to be here. Because everyone that's an NBA fan doesn't watch the NBA. They don't care about anything until they the just playoffs. yeah they care about like tweets and it's, and it's clips the clips. Worst. Yeah, I, the NBA sucks. <laughs> I, like it's it's the worst regular season. I will say. Uh, Wemby's block the other day uh, against the Warriors in a preseason game. I forget who was taking that shot, but that was just insane. Like I'm, He's a freak. He's, I just hope he doesn't get hurt. 
Yeah, because he's obviously a slender man. Yeah, I, I'm just excited to, to see on. one. It's two Western Conference foes, regional foes, Wemby and Chet banging down low. <laughs> Both just of them go to the hospital a together. Duel yeah. for the I'm ages. sorry, Chet's put on like 15 pounds. Of oh yeah, so, so his oh, yeah. Chet's femur is gonna snap in half <laughs> nope. and stab Wemby through the heart. Okay, That's what's see, makes the playoffs this year. Chet's gonna win Defense Player of the Year. Chet's still he's not gonna win. Pounds. Depoy, but they might win. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 got a good fucking team. I they could do. see them being a Western Conference final team. Yep. They got a good fucking team. Sacramento's got a fucking good team bouncing back too, but yeah. then so does Phoenix. The hilarious thing, by the way, is uh, if you guys have seen the Joker, uh at these promos and, and interviews and shit, I, it seems like he if this is his second job that he just does not want to be at. Um my bookie's currently running a promo with him and he's got his face painted like the Joker and everything else, and you can tell he just does not want to be there, do any of this. This like, is like his curse. Like he just it wants, is. It's he just wants so wild. He's the best player in the NBA. Just he, doesn't want to be there. He just wants to sit in a barn and play with his ponies. <laughs> <laughs> and then Harden has said his uh, still absence unclear for opener. I can make it clear for you. He ain't coming. He's not going to be there. He doesn't give a fuck about life. Yeah. I don't know what they do with him at it's this not point. Great. I think they should trade him to the Warriors, trade him for Chris Paul or something like that. Chris Paul would be okay on that team. I don't want Chris Paul at all. Nobody wants a fucking loser. I know. I know, but you got to get something. You got to get him out of there. I don't need And I think Harden with the Warriors lineup would fucking be fine. Just get get rid of him. I don't care. Because he only plays, like, they don't, they they only play the kind of defense that he plays, which is fucking passing lane, slapdick defense. You know what I mean? Anymore, anyways. By the way, you remember the, I forgot to bring this up when it happened, but do you remember that thing with Harden where he was like, I will never play on a Daryl Morey run team. I repeat, I'll never play on a Daryl Morey run team. Daryl Morey is a liar, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. He yep. said that like two months ago. Yeah, yep. yeah, but I forgot to bring this up the time. He, you know where he said that? China. In China. Yeah. yeah. He was in China speaking to an all Chinese audience. Do when... uh, you think there was a fucking Chinese dude off camera with a fucking AK? I think I think there was a the Chinese people were very happy to have him come over. Yeah, because Daryl Morey. Morey. Notoriously yep. shit on China. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Uh, and and to make that announcement there in China in front of all the media there that day, it was the first thing I noticed. So I was like, oh, cool, man. Uh, way to play it up for them. Of course, this is going to go around the world over here. Mm, fuck China. Yeah, but... Uh, He's going to be sh- fucking playing in China soon. Like, who would even <laughs> yeah, want fat I agree. James Harden at this point? Seriously, yeah. well, I mean, he, he could score. But point, He's useful, yeah. He, he, I, I, I wonder, think he actually had one of the, his better seasons. You know what year. Stefan Marbury was playing, getting paid? Back uh, then, an insane amount, right? Twenty-eight yeah. mil a year, yeah, in like the mid or mid two two thousand. Starberry, yeah, With oh, the twenty-eight yeah. mil Tattoo a year on his head, yeah, and the shoes. He had all those shoes over there that yeah. were like they're cheap, yeah, nineteen ninety-nine or something like yeah. that. Well, Clay, for the kids, Clay uses some less. fucking Japanese company. His t- Clay Thompson's shoes are made in Japan. Yeah, are they? Like, oh, they're known for shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, Japan? Well, hey. Joel, Joel Embiid just signed with Skechers to be their, their new spokesman. They've never done basketball shoes. Shout over there. Having shout Skechers, by the way, for picking Team USA. Also, New Balance is like weirdly signing a lot of guys. Like Otani's a New Balance guy. I, I like New Balance. Balance is big in baseball. I, I like New of, Balance. A lot of people wear New Balance. They have good baseball. cleats. Skechers is very, very odd to me, though. It's um, gross. Yeah. yeah. It's not a good sign for Embiid. No. I, who knows how much money they're paying? I can tell you this. Skechers has endless money to do it. Um, look, a lot of great games on tonight. We got the uh, Niners at the Vikings, uh, 8-15 tonight. Uh, you got the Phillies on at 5 o'clock. You got Game 7 with the Rangers right after that. Plenty to gamble on over at mybookie.com. Make sure and use that promo code Drinking Bros to double your first deposit up to $1,000. Uh, bet with us or against us or just bet against me. Uh, tonight. Jesus Christ, man. I was awful in the NFL uh, for the second or third week in a row now. Uh, I'm taking the Niners minus six and a half. You might want to go the other way on this one. Uh, We appreciate you tuning in. Please rate the show on iTunes and fucking Spotify. The advertisers care. Please go over there and just like like it. Give it a five star and then walk away at that point. All right? Damn it, we need it. Uh, appreciate you tuning in, kids. For Danthony and Anthony Holloway, Delco Dan, Hot Bob, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Monday Morning Recap. Good morning, everyone. <laughs>